The featured dish in our Oaxacan feast today is called mancha manteles, and it's one of the most crowd-pleasing moles that you'll find in Oaxaca. Now, mancha manteles directly translates as tablecloth stainer. Why? Well, I guess it's because everybody likes it so much that they lap it up and stain their tablecloths. It's also a really good mole to start with if you're learning about the Oaxacan moles because it's only made with one type of chili, and it's the ancho chili. When you start working with the anchos to clean them, you want to pull out the stem end, let the seeds fall out. Next is to toast these chilies to bring out their flavor. I've got this griddle heated over about a medium heat. I'm going to press them flat against the surface. And you'll also notice a little change in the color of the chili itself. Once all of the chilies are toasted, you cover them with hot tap water. Cover them with a plate to keep them submerged. And then let them rehydrate for about half an hour. That's really all it will take to get them completely plump and ready to go into the mole. While the chilies are rehydrating, cut a white onion into slices. Then peel eight cloves of garlic and cut them in half. For this dish, I like to use fresh rendered pork lard to brown the onions and garlic over medium heat. Scoop the onions into a blender jar while you prepare the rest of the ingredients. Start with two whole chicken breasts. These are bone in and skin on. Flatten them to dislodge the breast bone, pull it out, and cut the whole breast in half. Then cut each half into three pieces, right down through the bones. Now brown the chicken pieces skin side down in the leftover pork lard. Flip them after a few minutes to brown the other side. Remove all of the brown chicken to a rimmed baking sheet. For this dish, I like to use boneless pork shoulder that's trimmed of most of its fat. I cut it into small chunks and then brown those in the pot the same way I did the chicken pieces earlier. Turn off the heat. Take the browned pieces of pork out of the pot. I'm going to leave that sit right there for a few minutes while we go to the next stage in the preparation of the sauce, which involves the spices. Now, the spices that we're going to be using for this may sound a little odd to you if you're not used to mole making because they sound like ones that go in sweet things. And I'm using the Mexican cinnamon sticks, the really, really light and flaky ones. I put about one inch of cinnamon in here, a couple of cloves, and then about a half a teaspoon of black peppercorns. Grind all the spices together in a mold cajete, that Mexican stone mortar, and brush them into the blender jar. You need four slices of bread. I'm cutting them here from a Pullman loaf. Tear those into small pieces and put them in with the spices. Now take the chilies out of their soaking liquid and add them to the blender along with a cup of water so that the mixture blends easily. Blend all of that together until it's a smooth puree. Then press it through a medium mesh strainer to catch any leftover bits of chili skin or spices. Now return the pan to a medium high heat. When a few drops of the chili mixture sizzle in that pork fat, add the sauce to the pan. Stir it until it's thickened and dark and just about the consistency of tomato paste. And turn that off while I add a couple of other ingredients to it. I need about two cups of water here. We're not using any broth for this recipe because we're gonna create our own when we're simmering the chicken and pork here. I'll put the pork pieces down into the sauce. They're gonna take longer than the chicken, so I'm gonna add them first. About a quarter of a cup of cider vinegar. A nice sprinkling of salt. This is just for the initial part of the cooking. We'll come back and season it in just a little bit. I'm gonna put the temperature on a kind of medium low. 
stir it all together, set the lid askew, and I'm gonna let that simmer for about 45 minutes. One of the things that I love about mancha manteles is that it's a sweet and savory mole. And for the sweet part, I'm cutting a pineapple into chunks to add to the pot along with the chicken and all the juices that have accumulated while it cooled. Put the top back on while you prepare the other sweet ingredient, plantains. You want plantains that are almost black. That's when you know that they're soft and sweet enough. Slice along the length to remove the skin, then cut each plantain in half lengthwise. Each of those halves is sliced into half inch pieces. To bring out the natural sweetness of the plantains, fry them in a good amount of vegetable oil or pork lard, turning them over every few minutes so that they caramelize deeply on all sides. The last little touch, of course, is to season this. Because this is a, a sweet and savory mole, I'm gonna start by adding some sugar to it because most dried chili sauces need a touch of sugar to bring out the natural fruitiness of the chili. But then of course we've added the plantain and the pineapple. And then it needs a little bit more salt. Stir it to dissolve both the salt and the sugar. I'm gonna turn off the heat and then I'll rewarm it when the guests arrive. Did you ever try to make rice for a crowd and turn out not so 